Hi, it's Dwyer. January 19th, 2024. Right? Always 1776.com. Also money, 1776.com. Let's talk about just some financial issues. But I need for everyone here to understand that nothing I say in this video should be construed as financial advice. I'm just telling you the things I'm thinking about, ideas I'm considering, some I'm pursuing. We'll talk about them, but first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now let me point out that Google, which is laying off workers, Right at a time when we're hearing that AI is such a financial bonanza. Think about it, right? At a time when Waymo is on the verge of making autonomous driving uh, a regular part of life, at least in the United States, right? Understand, in San Francisco, near where I am, they've had driverless taxis, right? They've jumped the fence. They're no longer in places like Phoenix, Right? They are actually all on the West Coast now. Very few towns in America are as hard to drive through as San Francisco. If you've ever um, had a uppity stick shift car and you've tried to go up and down some hills in San Francisco dealing with not just the hill, but the traffic. Right, Not just the hill and traffic but mass transit all around you, right? Buses and stuff like that. Um, you will know that if driverless cars can make it in San Francisco, they can make it anywhere. Well, just to understand, Google has upgraded Google Bar. So videos like this YouTube video, you can actually get summarized. In other words, you see a video and the video is 20 minutes long and you have three minutes. All you have to do in the United States is to punch in bar.google.com as your URL, right? Then when it pulls it up, just type in the word summarize and then type in copy and paste the URL of the video you want the summary for. And folks, it will spit out a nice summary that gives you at least a framework of what was discussed in the video. If you're into reading financial videos, this is a bonanza, right? Because all of the traditional media, right? If you're a CNBC person, if you're a Bloomberg person, uh, you can catch all of that on YouTube. But also for non-traditional videos, right? David Lynn, um, Adam Taggart and Thoughtful Money, for example. Right, You can get all of those as well and have nice summaries. The summaries, too, can entice you into watching the video. Right, You see a summary, you say, wow, did this speaker really say that? Did Bubba Horowitz really say this? Let me go watch this video. Now, let's talk about um, just some basic ideas. Uh, this video is really geared to... Um, a lot of the people I've been speaking with who've been talking my ear off about electric vehicles, right? Full disclosure, uh, by chance, and this is totally by chance, they built an electric vehicle fueling station right around the corner from where I live in West San Jose, right? Now, just understand, when you were growing up and you were using electrical lights, you were using electricity, right? You know, I would say electricity in your laptops, but there's a whole generation of people as old as I am who remember when there were no laptops. Well, let's just say you've been using electricity all of your life and you understood, didn't you, that the electricity you were using came from fossil fuels, right? You, you understood that these turbines, etc., were run on coal and natural gas, right? Well, there are drivers of electric vehicles 
coming up to me and acting as if the energy they're using doesn't come from fossil fuels. Folks, how did this myth get started? Folks, you know, I know we all look out when it's raining and see some lightning and stuff like that. That's not where the electricity you're using comes from. So, just understand too, you know, I have a friend, he drives a Prius, he used to talk my ear off about how he was environmentally responsible. If you live in Northern California, that's par for the course, right? Half the people up here think that, um, you know, uh, green energy is the way to go and they need to be environmentally responsible. Uh, just understand that electric vehicles use a lot of minerals including lithium and copper. Now, what I want people to do is to just Google pictures of the copper mine at Freeport McMoran. Right, by the way, that's a great play if you want to profit from electric vehicles. In my eyes, that's a play at least on par with any maker of electric vehicle cars. Well, just understand, if you ever look at photos of Freeport McMoran's copper mines, you're going to see an earth behind it that looks stripped. Right? Copper mining changes the landscape. When you see a copper mine, you're not thinking of greenery. You look at the copper mine, you're thinking, how could this possibly help the environment? Right, folks, just understand that electric vehicles need significantly more copper, significantly more copper than internal combustion engine cars. Let me also say, too, that that EV fueling station that I talked about, that's around the block from where I live, right? Just understand that there's some mornings where I pass by there, in my internal combustion engine car, by the way, right? I'm one of these guys who not only drives internal combustion engine cars, but drives old cars, right? Well, let me just say, I'll drive by there and I'll see a line, right? Understand it takes a long time to charge your vehicle. And so many people are driving Teslas these days that things can back up at the fueling station. Right, so you're looking at them and just understand, if you're an internal combustion engine guy, you're accustomed to pulling up at the gas station, pumping the gas quickly, then getting out of here. I say quickly relative to what's happening with Tesla owners right now. Right, folks, it, it takes a while to charge these electric cars. Let me also point out, too, the longer the trip, you're going to take the more you have to charge the car now i'm sure the people who have filled up their regular gas powered car you know have been at the pump at times and they get to half a tank and they think wow do i want to hang here for another three minutes and fill the whole thing up right folks understand the math is different when you're charging evs let me also say, too, you have another problem, right? And I mention this in part because so many EV people are coming up to me and pushing EVs as an investment idea, right? You have another problem. As I said earlier, I live in California, right? A little bit south of San Francisco, right? We down here, by the way, <laughs> We down here in San Jose think we are the centerpiece of Silicon Valley, right? Let's say every town in uh, this part of the Bay Area thinks they're the centerpiece of Silicon Valley, right? Uh, eBay is down here. You got Mountain View with Google. Uh, Cupertino has Apple, right? And all of them think they're the centerpiece of Silicon Valley. Okay. Okay, fair enough. But just to understand... I'll drive to Southern California every now and then. So I'll be on the five interstate highway, right? If you're in California, you know about the five, right? You can drive the five all the way down to San Diego. 
Well, I need for folks to understand that um, on the 5, actually in SoCal, I'd have to go 405. Okay, that's another story, but it breaks off the 5. Well, anyway, you go down the 5 and you're in the middle of nowhere. Right? You won't even see cows off by the side of the road. They're infrequent. So when you see signs that say things like gas, 40 miles, you're grateful at the end of the 40 miles to see that gas station. Folks, I'm just telling you, you don't see a lot of EV charging stations. The infrastructure in 2024 is not there to facilitate a trip between San Jose and LA. It's just not there. Now I know EV people will tell you things like, hey, um, you know, the range on EVs have improved, right? We've all heard that. Let me just point out, you and I know life's a little bit more complicated than that, right? I can tell you, I've taken several long trips where I'll be well into the trip, and then I'll think, wow, I forgot to fill up before I was on this trip. Now, if I'm in a car, that's not that big a deal, right? I'll turn off, go to the next gas station. There's almost guaranteed to be a gas station by some mall or some Motel 6 by the side of the highway. You can't do that with EVs. Down the road, it'll change. Folks, it's not here now. Right? Not only that, understand, there's a bigger crisis point. If your EV can travel 300 miles, right, and you forgot to charge that baby before you hit the road, you might be operating on well short of half a full charge. In other words, 150 is your outer limit. If you're like me and you're, you know, leaning back in your car and you're listening to all kind of music, you might not even think of that until you're about 80 miles into the trip. Right? So just think it through. Now, don't get me wrong. I love being in a Tesla. The first thing you notice is how quiet it is. Right? As I said, I, I usually drive around in old cars, right? My my old Beamer is going to have to die on me before I replace it, right? So I'm accustomed to hearing old car engines. In a Tesla, it's electrical. Far fewer moving parts, right? Um, the lack of noise is impressive, right? The display is impressive. But don't try to sell me on it being some kind of alternative to fossil fuels. It's not, right? Think about where the electricity comes from. Let me just say this too, there are other problems. If you look into the market for used Teslas, right, you need to be aware of the fact that when the battery dies down the road, it's going to cost you a minimum of $5,000, likely higher, to get a new battery. In other words, you're buying the used car at used car prices thinking, hey, great, I got a deal. And then you find out that you have to come out of pocket several thousand more dollars. Right? Be aware of that. Also understand, too, weather matters. The car doesn't have the range in cold, icy weather. So if you're in New York City, if you're in places like Missouri right now, you need to realize, you know, let's say we've just gone through a cold stretch. Right? The temperatures were in the 20s in some places. Just understand that your EV won't have the range that it has in warm weather when it's in cold weather. Right? Figure that out. 
Now, there's an investment guru I follow, and he's excellent. He's excellent. But right now, he's hot and bothered over Tesla's Project Dojo. Right? Let me just make a point here. Right? Um, having great computers, which Tesla has, to record the driving conditions of its vehicles, right, doesn't change the fact that electricity initially comes from fossil fuels. Right, just, just get that basic point. Let me also say too, and this might be the libertarian in me, right? You know, there are times where I slip out of here and I don't even want my family to know where I'm going. Right? Just be aware that this new technology comes at a price. They always tell you, don't they? They always tell you, we will never use this technology to invade your privacy. Right? Then years later, you find out that you know, your social media accounts were making money selling your search information, right? So just be cognizant of that. Let me also say too, Project Dojo opens the door to another question. Now I use Uber like a lot of people from time to time. Um, if autonomous driving becomes a thing in the next two years, do I even want to own a car? If I can summon a Tesla and it shows up, picks me up, and it's cheap because it doesn't have a human driver, right? No one is there making that ridiculous minimum wage that folks are making in several states now. I was at an In-N-Out Burger yesterday and they had a sign where they were saying, now hiring, 20 odd dollars an hour. I'm not kidding, right? Um, folks, understand that high minimum wage is a recipe for technologies to take over that can delete the driver altogether, right? So if you're saving $20 an hour on an autonomous Waymo trip, right? Do I want to even own my own car? where I have to pay for my own fuel, where I have to pay for repairs, and where I have to carry car insurance. Right? I get the feeling 10 years from now that a lot of people who are buying cars today are going to look back on how ridiculous that concept was, right? When we reach the stage, and it might happen sooner than that. According to some reports, it's already happened where autonomous computerized driving is actually safer than human driving, right? Nonetheless, if you're an investor, I believe, and I'm just not giving investment advice, I'm just telling you what I'm into, I believe you need to keep an eye on coal and natural gas, right? Now, truth be told, you know, yesterday I bought some more Bitcoin. I'm into crypto. I'm into Bitcoin in particular, right? But I'm keeping an eye on energy. I'm still into EQT, a stock I mentioned here in the past that is down right now with a lot of the energy sector, right? I believe, you know, when, when pundits tell you they expect inflation to return, and how could it not with our debt levels in the system right now? Right? The way we're going to pay back a lot of debt is by watering down the currency. Dollar-denominated debt is going to be paid back in watered-down dollars. But just understand, when you water down the currency, inelastic goods like energy, oil, um, you know, natural gas, which matters to EV owners, right? it's going to jump in price. We've all lived through price jumps for energy, right? Well, right now, energy is being sold at dirt cheap prices, 
right? A barrel of uh, oil is just a shade over $70. Let me also make another point too. You're here in the United States and you would think that no one uses coal anymore, any, anywhere, right? You don't even know that the EVs are running in part on coal, right? The only difference is if it's internal combustion engine, you see the pollution come out the tailpipe. If it's an EV, the pollution was on the front end of the supply chain coming out of the coal mine, right? Well, just understand that they're using a lot of coal, record levels in places like China and India. Understand too, you have a different value system there, right? My parents were from the countryside of Jamaica, right? You know, when they showed up in Kingston, people viewed them as country bumpkins. Now, I'm just telling you, if you're a peasant in some place like China and you've suddenly made it to the big city, right? And you understand that you need cheap energy to maintain your standard of living. Let's just say that the environment isn't the big issue there that it is here in the United States, right? Our value system isn't global, folks. They're using a lot of coal in both China and India, right? The risk reward is easy for them to compute, right? They understand they want electricity. I'm not talking about in their car, I'm talking about at home, right? They want electricity, right? That beats poverty. So understand, I know people are down on coal, companies, right? Um, if you're an investor and you're looking for a profit, and if you don't have a problem with the idea of people coming out of poverty using cheap energy, and if you understand the challenge China faces importing energy for over a billion people, right? They have significant problems, right? The waterways require, you know, a lot of effort to get the energy to China. Look at the amount of energy that China imports, right? Well, you need to understand that coal, which China has a lot of, right, is going to be an energy source for them. So my good friend who thinks that there's only one state in the union, the guy who drives the Prius, who thinks that there's California and he doesn't quite realize that there are 49 other states, right? He's a guy who just doesn't get it, right? Someone like that just doesn't understand that there's a vibrant coal market in China and India. You, the investor, needs to have a global vision far more than a one state local vision let me also point out too that i own some exxon stock i've mentioned it here in past videos that i have no intention of selling anytime soon i think fossil fuels remains an excellent play as does warren buffett right i also have owned in the past Freeport MacMoran. I plan to grab some Freeport MacMoran in the future, right? When I think the price levels in crypto have stabilized, folks, that's a long runway for crypto, right? I think crypto is going to be the big story here in 2024, right? Let me also point out too that artificial intelligence is helping to drive these electric vehicles. Think of the supply chain there. I like some semiconductor production line plays there, including ASML and TSMC, right? Taiwan Semiconductor. All right, of course, let me just point out too that I also like the major tech companies that have invested heavily in artificial intelligence, 
right again none of this should be construed as investment advice now I agree with people that the Magnificent Seven are overstretched right you need to follow great investors like Jim Rogers who openly says he's just waiting for the market to turn he's waiting for the enthusiasm to leave these Magnificent Seven stocks so he can jump in and short them right just understand you have to let the players play just just food for thought well investors also need to realize the amount of money that Google Meta and Amazon have poured into artificial intelligence folks it's huge Microsoft owns part of open AI right let's just say that these stocks have a huge jump on the competition right as AI thrives I believe those stocks will thrive that's how I see it today uh, understand my mind will change when the facts change but that's how I see it today let me hear from you uh, if you're one of these environmentally conscious people who wants to plug electric vehicles, uh, wants to plug your Tesla, wants to mention that Toyota is talking about bringing solid state batteries to the EV market as soon as 2025. Tell us about all of that in the comment section of this YouTube video. Thanks for stopping by.